Hey, spoiler alert. This video is going to contain uh, a, a lot of stuff about House of X issue number two, which is a really important uh, issue in this whole House of X, Powers of X thing. So if you haven't read that and you don't want to hear any of the juicy secrets, uh, you might want to wait for this video. But if you can't wait like me, um, let's go check it out. <laughs> Welcome back to Comic Book News. It's been a while. We're back in the Batcave, um, but we're reviewing more X-Men comics. Wow, my last two reviews were X-Men comics, and here we are with uh, Powers of X, number two. And without further ado, let's go right to the Million Dollar Comic Book Cam. By the way, newly upgraded with uh, uh, plush pleather background and uh, new exciting uh, animated graphics. Holy cow. Uh, House of X number two. Now, this was listed in the reading chronology as it was highlighted as if this were an important issue. And 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 I would say that it is. Um, we've Jonathan Hickman has uh, done something here and revealed uh, sort of a new uh, uh, wrinkle to a very old character in the X-Men, Moira McTaggart. Uh, Charles Xavier's old ex-girlfriend or lover, whatever, uh, mother to uh, to Legion uh, with him, and you know ran the Moira, the Muir Island uh, sort of sanctuary for mutants, almost like a European uh, uh, X mansion, if you will, where they raised a parallel X Men team. If you read the Brew Baker New Genesis stuff, um, but. Uh, House of X number two reveals something uh, quite shocking about Moira that we didn't know. And uh, spoiler alert, she's a mutant. Yeah, Moira McTaggart is a mutant and has always been a mutant. And and uh, obviously, I, and her mutant power is one of reincarnation. So... She lives her entire. She has lived her entire life many times, and uh, every time she dies, her mutant power uh, lets her be reborn and start life again, but with knowledge of all those previous lives. And uh, so she tries to make you know she tries to make changes. There's some changes she can make, some changes she can't. Hickman does a really uh, interesting job here talking about some of the sort of paradoxes of like how your life changes if you were to know everything that was going to happen in your life ahead of time how that might you know kill spontaneity and and you know you know maybe that that spark of love or interest that you had might not happen the same way the next time around um so the idea is that she 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 had her mutant manifestation um, around puberty at age 13 and, uh, and and lived her life and died and came back and remembered that life and eventually realized that she was a mutant and in one of her lives she dedicated herself she, she decided that, that being a mutant was an illness and so she dedicated herself to uh, creating a cure for, for mutants um, it was meant to be voluntary and um, but in that life, in that t alternate reality timeline, if you will, it didn't work out so well um, because the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and in particular Destiny, uh, uh, is, is sort of revealed as a, sort of a check against Moira in that Destiny can see the future. So in any, and she's older than Moira, which means her powers have already manifested in all of these lives, have already manifested. Destiny's ability to see the future is already manifested by the time Moira is born and has not even um, developed her powers yet. And in fact, uh, reveals sort of to Moira, Destiny does, that uh, you know, you're just lucky that you never died before your mutant powers manifested because if they did, then you would be dead permanently. And based on my uh, soothsaying abilities and sort of uh, knowledge of timelines, I predict you've got maybe, you know, 10 or so more chances before you're just, you know, you're, 
you die in childbirth or you die in a car accident at a uh, before your powers have have manifested. I thought that was a really interesting wrinkle on on the idea. Like Hickman has taken a, a, a mutant power, and instead of it being a really shiny, fancy, energy manipulating thing that everybody does, or spikes that grow out of your body, it's something as simple as you being reincarnated and living living life again and again. And what an interesting spin on it he put. This is really pulling me in. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm not going to give away too much about more about that, but uh, suffice it to say, she dies a, a grisly death in this in that timeline. And they go on to reveal many other timelines. And in fact, speaking of timelines, a major component of this book, you know, besides the filler pages full of text, we've also got some filler pages like this. You know, to me. This is this is not really acceptable filler. This is like waste of space. This, on the other hand, is pretty cool. So these are the many lives of Moira X. So this is her first life, and we can follow this any, all of these timelines through and see how she lived her life. I mean, they were not lived parallel, obviously. They were lived one at a time. So she lived this life and died, and then lived this life and died, etc., and went down the lives. And we have all these different events that happened in these early lives that sort of informed her decisions in these later lives. And there's some really cool lives. And we can see here where the timelines end, where she dies of in her first life. At age 74, she dies of congested heart heart fa failure, congestive heart failure. Yeah, uh, and later in, in these other timelines, she dies in different ways. And the one where she was killed, it just says dies in a laboratory fire. That's where a Mystique and uh, uh, the Brotherhood really pull a brutal number on her because they want her to remember for the rest of her lives that if she tries to make a cure for mutants again, Destiny is going to know that and she's going to die in a horribly painful fashion. That makes me smile for some reason, right? I like it. It's dark. Uh, it's um, uh, It's got precognition and instead of time travel per se this is reincarnation and parallel universes and mm, i'm eating it up with a spoon what's uh pretty interesting in some of these all of these timelines have a death an end to them except two the ninth life where uh it it, it showed she she joins up with apocalypse and sort of joins his army and here we see in at year 42, uh, the Apocalypse War begins, and, and we don't get to see an end to that timeline. Presumably she did die because there's a 10th year, a 10th timeline. And if we follow this, we can see this 10th timeline leads directly to where we are, meaning that this is the current Marvel Universe timeline that we've always known, right? So this black timeline on the bottom represents sort of the events... Uh, in Moira McTaggart's life, you know, at uh, age 25, marries Joseph McTaggart, founds the Muir Research Institute, wins a Nobel Prize, gives birth to Proteus, sorry, not Legion, I meant, I meant Proteus uh, earlier. And, uh, and, and the, the things that we've seen in X-Men continuity in this timeline. So um, what we also learn in this book is that the first time Moira met Xavier in this timeline she revealed all of this to him and gave access to all of her thoughts which means all of her memories of all of her previous lives so this is all information that Charles Xavier has he can see the sort of she lived each of her lives as a different experiment to see if there was a different way to help solve the mutant problem if you will Right, the problem in it, 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 once she realized that she wasn't going to be able to medically cure it that the Brotherhood wasn't going to let her do that. Once she realized that, um, you know, she dedicated her different lives. Each life she would dedicate in a different way to try and different techniques and joining up with the bad guys or the good guys or whatever. And uh, she's brought all that knowledge to bear. And Professor X has all that knowledge and has always had all that knowledge. And that's just yet another wrinkle in, in the, the saga of Professor X, who's one of those characters that, like... Uh, is pretty cool. Again, more code in the back. Professor X is so cool because 
There's always been something kind of sinister about him, right? He's reading minds. He's controlling minds. He's manipulating events. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's not telling everyone all his secrets. So all of these layers upon layers of secrets have been here for years. And, and now we've got a yet another secret, right? We've got, uh, the, 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 the Professor X that we've been seeing, uh, in House of X from the first issue is this guy. And what is going on here? Is this a built-in Cerebro helmet or something? Is this really Professor X? We don't even know. Um, I was hoping maybe we'd get more of a reveal on that in this issue. But so far, we're up to House of X uh, number two and Powers of X uh, number one came out last week. And as you see here, two series that are one. Like They really want to sell you on this, right? And they're coming out every other week. And they're $4.99 a piece. So uh, that's like 20 bucks a month instead of $3.99 a month or whatever a single comic would be. It's 20 bucks a month. But you know what? I am not complaining. I am super enjoying the X-Men for the longest time since I can remember. So um, I'm staying on board. I'm going to read these. All the other spinoff series and stuff, I'm going to take those on a series by series basis like we do with anything, right? It, like most things in life, there's an 80-20 rule to comics, okay? 80% of them are really not very good at all. I mean, I don't want to say that they're awful necessarily, but they're just not uh, uh, that high quality of a work of art. But that's okay because in life, that's how everything is. Only about 20% of them are really, really, really worth reading. Those are the ones that I want to try to highlight here on Comic Book News. And I know recently... I've been, uh, you know, mostly just reviewing single issue Marvel and DC comics, but uh, I've got some more long form content coming very soon, uh, reviewing some old indie stuff. I've got some more interviews lined up that are on the way, um, and but I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you, the viewers out there. What do you want to see me cover? What am I not talking about that you'd like to hear me talk about, or what am I talking too much about? You want to see more of those kooky technology facial recognition videos like I did before, or do you not care? I don't know. I want to know. So, hey, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel and maybe hit like on this uh, video if you enjoyed it. And uh, ring that little bell if you want to get notifications of my f uh, future videos as they come out. And Thank you so much for watching. I, I truly appreciate it.